U.S. Secretary of Energy Chris Wright is in Amarillo to deliver remarks recognizing the completion of the first production unit of the B-6113. Of the first B-61-13. The first B-61-13 gravity bomb. The Department of Energy says the bomb is a modernized nuclear weapon designed to meet updated Department of Defense requirements. In a major development within the realm of global defense and strategic deterrence, the United States Department of Energy's National Nuclear Security Administration has officially announced the completion of the first nuclear gravity bomb. This announcement, made at a keynote event held at the Pantex plant in Texas, marked a significant moment in the modernization of America's nuclear arsenal. Led by Secretary of Energy Chris Wright, the event underscored the urgency and strategic importance behind the weapon's accelerated development. This represents the latest advancement in the B-61 family of nuclear gravity bombs, a series that has been a central pillar of the U.S. nuclear triad for decades. Gravity bombs are nuclear weapons designed to be dropped from aircraft, relying on gravity alone to reach their targets, as opposed to being guided or propelled. This class of weapon plays a crucial role in the United States' strategic and tactical nuclear posture, offering flexible deployment options and a wide range of potential applications in both deterrent and military capacities. With a maximum yield of up to 360 kilotons, the B-61 is approximately 24 times more powerful than the atomic bomb detonated over Hiroshima in 1945. According to estimations based on airburst scenarios, such a blast would completely devastate urban structures within a one-mile radius, demolish most buildings within a two-mile range, and cause severe thermal burns at distances extending up to seven miles. Lethal radiation exposure could reach as far as two miles. These figures, however, vary depending on terrain and the precise height at which the bomb is detonated. Regardless, the destructive potential of the gravity bomb underscores its role as a powerful component in the broader U.S. strategy of deterrence. The gravity bomb's production timeline has surprised many observers. The first B-61 unit was completed nearly a year ahead of schedule and within two years of the program's initiation. Officials attribute this achievement to streamlined design processes, rapid congressional approval and a highly coordinated effort between the Department of Energy's National Nuclear Security Administration and the U.S. Air Force. Engineering teams were able to begin test builds just three months after securing necessary funding making this gravity bomb one of the fastest developed nuclear weapons since the end of the Cold War. This accelerated pace reflects both technological capability and a renewed sense of urgency given the current global security landscape. The B-61 is not intended as an entirely new design, but as an evolution of previous models. It builds upon the recently deployed B-6112, incorporating the same safety, security and precision guidance upgrades. However, the new bomb features a significantly higher yield and is specifically tailored to target large, fortified and deeply buried enemy facilities. It is to be deployed exclusively by strategic bombers operating from within the continental United States, further differentiating its mission from previous variants. In recent years, the US government has placed considerable emphasis on modernizing its nuclear arsenal in accordance with the 2022 Nuclear Posture Review. This policy framework emphasizes maintaining a credible, safe, and effective nuclear deterrent in the face of evolving threats, including those posed by peer and near-peer adversaries. The development of the B-61 is seen as an embodiment of this strategy, ensuring that the United States maintains flexibility in nuclear planning and remains prepared to respond to a range of potential contingencies. However, the announcement of the B-61 has not been without controversy. Critics of the program argue that the development of such a powerful and precise nuclear weapon risks escalating tensions between nuclear-armed states. They worry that by introducing new capabilities, the United States could inadvertently spark an arms race or encourage adversaries to pursue similar advances in their own arsenals. These concerns are compounded by the ethical implications associated with the potential use of a high-yield nuclear weapon in modern warfare. The sheer destructive capacity of a 360 kiloton gravity bomb is difficult to fully comprehend. Beyond the immediate blast and radiation effects, a detonation of such magnitude would result in long-term environmental and humanitarian consequences. Radiation contamination, fallout and the displacement of populations 
are just a few of the long-lasting issues associated with the use of nuclear weapons. For these reasons, many experts and advocacy groups have called for greater transparency, international dialogue and renewed commitments to non-proliferation efforts. Despite the debates surrounding the B-61, officials have defended the program as a necessary step in adapting to current and future security challenges. Acting Deputy Administrator for Defense Programs, David Hoagland, emphasized that the successful production of the B-61 reflects a broader capability to manage multiple modernization efforts simultaneously, without compromising on safety or technical standards. It is one of seven active modernization programs under the United States Department of Energy's National Nuclear Security Administration's oversight, signaling a comprehensive overhaul of the aging U.S. nuclear arsenal. Supporters of the new gravity bomb argue that its precision and safety features make it a more responsible option within the spectrum of nuclear capabilities. By replacing older, less reliable bombs, the B-61 aims to enhance command and control, reduce the risk of accidental detonation, and offer more targeted effects if ever used. These factors, proponents say, contribute to a more credible and controlled deterrent, potentially preventing conflict by ensuring that adversaries perceive any nuclear aggression as a losing proposition. Furthermore, the development of the B-61 aligns with ongoing efforts to address emerging military technologies and tactics, such as hardened underground facilities and advanced anti-air defenses. In this sense, the bomb is seen not only as a symbol of power, but as a practical tool in strategic military planning. The combination of upgraded delivery mechanisms, improved guidance systems, and variable yield options allows the US military to tailor its nuclear posture more precisely to evolving threats. Ultimately, the recent announcement of the nuclear gravity bomb marks a pivotal moment in the ongoing evolution of global strategic defense. It highlights the balance that modern states must strike between deterrence and diplomacy, innovation, and restraint. While it introduces powerful new capabilities, it also raises important questions about the future of arms control, the risks of escalation, and the responsibilities of nuclear armed nations. The United States Navy announces that it's using directed energy weapons. In a significant and unprecedented move, the United States Navy has officially acknowledged its use of high energy laser weapons, marking a defining moment in the evolution of modern warfare. This announcement, which confirms the successful deployment and testing of advanced directed energy technology, has sparked both intrigue and discussion in defense circles and beyond. The Navy's recent admission shines a light on the progress being made in military technology and signals a transformative shift in how future battles may be fought, without the need for traditional ammunition and with a level of precision that current weaponry cannot achieve. The cornerstone of this announcement revolves around the USS Portland, a cutting-edge vessel with amphibious capabilities, which has now etched its name into military history by successfully using a solid-state laser weapon system to disable an unmanned aerial vehicle. This breakthrough was not merely a test of concept, but a demonstration of real-world functionality under authentic maritime conditions. The laser, operating with incredible intensity and accuracy, effectively neutralized its airborne target, proving its capability as a next-generation defensive tool. The ability to incapacitate drones in flight using a concentrated beam of energy is a powerful indicator of how seriously the Navy is embracing futuristic defense strategies. This level of success is not a sudden leap, but the result of years of rigorous research, scientific advancement, and carefully conducted field tests. The laser weapon system, described as a solid-state laser weapon system demonstrator, was tested in the vast, unpredictable waters of the Pacific Ocean. Though the exact coordinates of the test site remain classified for security reasons, the Navy has released captivating images and video footage that show a powerful laser beam being projected from the side of the USS Portland. These visuals not only serve as evidence of the laser's capabilities, but also symbolize a new chapter in US military preparedness and strategic deterrence. The Navy's decision to publicize this capability is notable. High-energy laser weapons have long been a topic of speculation and futuristic imagination, often appearing in science fiction. However, their real-world application is no longer speculative. By confirming their operational use, the Navy is signaling both confidence in the system and a warning to potential adversaries. 
The message is clear. The future of warfare will not solely be decided by missiles and gunfire, but by energy-based systems that can strike at the speed of light, silently and without warning. Directed energy weapons like high-energy lasers represent a monumental shift from conventional warfare methods. Instead of relying on projectiles or explosions, these weapons deliver focused energy, such as light or microwaves, directly to a target. This results in incapacitation through heat, disruption, or other physical effects, without the explosive destruction typically associated with traditional weapons. One of the key advantages of these systems is their pinpoint precision, which significantly reduces collateral damage. In densely populated or sensitive environments, this precision is invaluable, allowing forces to neutralize threats without endangering civilians or critical infrastructure. Another defining characteristic of laser weapons is their speed. Energy beams travel at the speed of light, meaning they can reach their targets almost instantly once fired. This provides a substantial tactical advantage, allowing operators to respond to fast-moving threats such as drones, rockets or incoming projectiles in real time. The ability to act almost instantaneously is a game-changer in scenarios where fractions of a second can determine the outcome. The USS Portland's use of the laser weapon against a UAV is particularly significant. Drones are increasingly being used in both reconnaissance and offensive operations, often posing difficult challenges for conventional air defense systems. Their small size, maneuverability, and the difficulty of tracking them make them elusive targets. A high-energy laser system, however, bypasses these issues entirely by locking onto and disabling the drone's operational systems with a burst of directed energy. This approach is both efficient and cost-effective, as it avoids the need to deploy expensive missiles to neutralize relatively low-cost threats. The announcement also highlights how far US military innovation has advanced in terms of weapon deployment timelines. The Department of Defense, in collaboration with the Department of Energy's National Nuclear Security Administration, reported that the development and integration of the laser system aboard the Portland occurred with remarkable speed. This accelerated timeline reflects a broader shift within the military-industrial complex toward agile development, rapid prototyping, and timely deployment. These changes are necessary in a global environment where threats are becoming more diverse and unpredictable. While the Navy has not disclosed the exact power output of the laser used, Estimates and independent studies suggest that such systems may reach power levels of up to 150 kilowatts. A laser at this strength is capable of disabling aircraft, drones, and potentially even smaller boats or lightly armored vehicles. The implications are profound. Not only can these lasers engage aerial threats, but they also have potential applications in protecting naval fleets from swarming attacks by unmanned systems or speedboats, tactics that are becoming more common in modern asymmetrical warfare. Captain Carrie Sanders, commanding officer of the USS Portland, emphasized the importance of conducting these tests in real maritime conditions. According to him, testing the system at sea provides invaluable data on how it performs under variable and unpredictable circumstances, from weather to wave impact. These insights are critical for ensuring that the system can be reliably deployed across different combat scenarios. Testing also allows for calibration and refinement ensuring that safety and efficiency are maintained as the weapon is integrated into broader defense strategies. As international security dynamics grow more complex, the demand for innovative, responsive and adaptive defense solutions has never been higher. Countries around the world are exploring the potential of directed energy weapons, but the US Navy's successful testing and operational deployment sets a precedent. It reflects a significant leap ahead in technological capability and underlines a commitment to maintaining strategic superiority. Critically, the use of such systems is not without ethical and strategic debate. While laser weapons offer precision and lower collateral risk, their potential to escalate conflicts or shift global power balances cannot be ignored. There is also concern about an arms race in directed energy systems, particularly if other nations seek to match or counter US advancements. These technologies could blur the lines of engagement, leading to quicker escalations or unintended consequences in high-tension environments. The international community must begin addressing these issues with transparency, regulation and dialogue to ensure that innovation does not come at the cost of global stability. As of right now, 
The U.S. Navy's admission of using high-energy laser weapons aboard the USS Portland is a defining moment in military innovation. It reflects not only a successful test of futuristic technology, but also a broader shift in how threats are managed in modern warfare. These weapons offer precision, speed and versatility, providing a glimpse into what future naval and aerial combat could look like.